good morning students so in this session you will be learning a new property defined by second law of thermodynamics known as entropy it is a measure of disorder in a system also we can say that the entropy is a quantitative measure of microscopic disorder for a system so at the microscopic level what are the irregularities or irreversibilities or disorder within the system is termed as entropy so let us examine a little history how this uh, property has arrived right so you know that carnot proposed that heat must always be wasted in order for a heat engine to produce network so complete conversion of heat into work is not possible as per the uh, first statement of the second law of thermodynamics kelvin planck statement you know that right so carnot proposed that heat engine based on that kelvin planck statement but he could not quantify how much heat had to be wasted so what is the wastage of heat ql the heat must be wasted to the lower temperature sink reservoir he could not quantify it but in 1850 later rudolf clausius another scientist known as rudolf clausius confirmed the existing theories like uh, the conservation of energy first law of thermodynamics as well as the heat flows naturally from hot to cold the underlying principle of uh, heat transfer so these theories were confirmed by rudolf clausius in 1850 and he added an important contribution that some heat had to be rejected from a reversible carnot heat engine that is ql as carnot proposed and he also observed that for reversible heat engines for reversible heat engines we have seen in carnot principles reversible and irreversible heat engine uh, among all the engines a reversible engine will be having the highest efficiency right and between a reversible and irreversible heat engine reversible engine is having the highest efficiency right when operating in a carnot uh, cycle so clausius observed that for a reversible heat engine the ratio of the heat input the ratio of the heat input to the rejected heat that ratio heat input to the qh to ql heat absorbed to the heat rejected was consistently equal to the ratio of absolute temperature versus the high and low temperature reservoirs th by tl that means qh by ql is equal to th by tl that was a contribution by clausius after studying the carnot principles as well as first and second law of thermodynamics as well as the heat transfer so rearranging for a reversible heat engine the same expression qh by ql equal to th by tl could be written as qh by th equal to ql by tl so ratio of q and t the heat transfer at a particular temperature absolute temperature t is in absolute scale absolute temperature scale clausius then examined irreversible process till now we were talking about reversible processes then he examined irreversible process and found that this relation this equality q by t is not valid always q by th is less, less than q by tl for a irreversible process thereby he established an inequality clausius inequality it is known as clausius inequality combining the above two that is qh by th equal to ql by tl and q by th less than q by tl combining these two for a heat engine with one heat input and what one heat output only a single input and output he established this inequality that is qh by th minus ql by tl less than or equal to zero qh by th minus ql by tl less than or equal to zero or this is for a single inlet and outlet for a sequence of processes we can write summation of q by t from 1 to k is less than or equal to zero sigma k q by t of k is less than or equal to zero that is known as clausius inequality now from this we are going to quantify 
or introduce the new term known as entropy. This is the ratio of the Clausius inequality is the ratio of heat amount of heat transferred in a process to the temperature of the surroundings where heat is transferred. So T is the absolute temperature to which heat is transferred. So calculating the ratio as the integral of a continuous function of delta Q by T. Continuous function of delta Q by T, Clausius principle for a reversible or irreversible cycle is closed integral delta Q by T less than or equal to zero. Closed integral delta Q by T less than or equal to zero. That means always the cyclic integral of delta Q by T is less than or equal to zero. The ratio of heat to temperature that is Q by T. Ratio of heat to temperature has characteristics of a property. Why? It does not change in a cycle. Closed integral. Right? It does not change in a cycle. So here we have seen that closed integral of delta Q by T less than or equal to zero. Always less than or equal to zero. That means for a cycle it does not change. Also it is associated with heat transfer, a path function. Heat transfer is a path function, not a point function. Right? So it does have a characteristic of a property Q by T. It is known as entropy. Q by T is known as entropy. It has evolved from the Greek word, the entropy name has evolved from the Greek word for transformation with the symbol for entropy, the letter S. S is the symbol for entropy. Now, based on entropy, we have another law of thermodynamics. This is not that much popular because it is um, applicable only for absolute zero condition. So, this is a statement of third law of thermodynamics. The entropy of a pure crystalline substance. Entropy of a pure crystalline substance at absolute zero temperature. When temperature is zero, Kelvin is zero. So, entropy can become zero only at absolute temperature that too for a pure crystalline substance that is quite difficult to find so this is the variation in entropy for different phases of matter on the y-axis you have the entropy and in joule per kelvin there is a unit we will see that in detail in the coming slides and x-axis you have the temperature so you know that the temperature increases from solid to liquid to gas so when the substance changes its phase from solid to liquid and to then to gas, the entropy continuously increases. So you can see in vaporization, there is a sudden increase in entropy when compared to the solid to liquid transformation. So these are the, some of the remarks of the entropy. The um, Rather than defining simply entropy, we usually um, interested in change in entropy delta s or s2 minus s1 we usually uh, designate entropy as ds or delta s that is the change in entropy in a process change in entropy in a process rather than specifying the entropy at a particular point so you can see here reversible process and irreversible process from 1 to 2 on a ts diagram on a ts diagram so delta s here, for example, is 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.4. So, there are some remarks about entropy. Entropy change is caused by heat transfer and irreversibility. So, always there is a change in entropy because of irreversibilities as well as heat transfer. Heat transfer to a system, when heat is transferred into a system, it increases the entropy because there will be random disarrangement, I mean rearrangement of the molecule. So it will create randomness in the within the system. So that will increase the entropy and heat transfer from a system decreases it. When the heat is transferred from the system, obviously the entropy decreases. The effect of irreversibilities is always to increase the entropy. The effect of irreversibilities is always to increase the entropy. So entropy is a result of irreversibilities at the microscopic level inside a system. Also it is um, increased when heat is transferred to a system. So increase in entropy principle would be summarized like this. 
for a reversible process the entropy change or entropy generated is zero for an irreversible process entropy generated or change in entropy final to final entropy minus initial entropy always entropy increases the entropy of the universe always increases for an irre irreversible process entropy increases for a reversible process it is zero change in entropy is zero when a process is executed in such a way that the change in entropy is less than zero if delta is less than zero that process is impossible such a process never can happen so process can occur in a certain direction only not in just any direction such that entropy generated is greater than or equal to zero that could be concluded from the previous remarks so always the entropy generated is greater than or equal to zero the process will be taking place only in a certain direction so this is valid as per second law of thermodynamics also so entropy is a non conserved property just opposite to energy energy is a conserved property but entropy is a non conserved property and there is no such thing as conservation of entropy principle so always the entropy of the universe is increasing so many engineering systems the performance of such engineering systems is degraded by the presence of irreversibilities friction heat transfer right all these are irreversibilities so entropy generation is a measure of the magnitudes of the irreversibilities present during that process within the engineering systems now units of entropy specific entropy and total entropy specific entropy we can write kilojoule per kilogram kelvin denoted by lower case s upper case s is the total entropy which is an extensive property kilojoule per kelvin or joule per kelvin so sign convention is same as that for heat if the heat is transferred into a system then the entropy of the system increases when the heat is transferred out of the system the entropy of the system must decrease now on a ts diagram on a temperature entropy diagram the area under the curve the area under the curve of that particular process give you the heat transfer give you the heat transfer because it is t into delta s t multiplied with delta s integral of 1 to 2 t multiplied with delta s is equal to q so heat transfer in internally reversible process is shown as the area under the process curve plotted on a ts diagram so ts diagram is very important directly you can get the heat transfer during that process so this is the second law of thermodynamics you can state as the increase in entropy principle so we can state second law total entropy change of an isolated system during a process always increases or in the limiting case of a reversible process remains constant so you know that in an isolated system there is no heat transfer no work transfer no energy transfer as well as no mass transfer right no work transfer no heat transfer as well as no mass transfer isolated system so in such an isolated system when an ex process is executed within the isolated system the entropy change always increases or in the limiting case becomes constant remains constant so these are the conclusions we can arrive at from the discussion so far reversible process you know that s2 minus s1 is integral 1 to 2 for a process 1 to 2 delta q by t for an adiabatic process is equal to s generated entropy generated s2 minus s1 equal to entropy generated because there is no heat transfer in an adiabatic process a reversible and adiabatic process is termed as isentropic process where entropy remains constant or s2 minus s1 is zero s1 equal to s2 isentropic process so thank you for watching if you have any doubts please we feel free to contact and watch the video again and again if you have any doubts regarding entropy is very simple and the knowledge of entropy is a must to understand the steam tables as well as molar diagrams and the upcoming sessions so please
please be prepared for the upcoming sessions by learning this thoroughly thank you